Hello, this is John Spielman with an audio, audio and visual version of my latest column for Chess Space, my fortnightly column, twice a month. And this is number 187, apparently, and it is called, I called it, The Gods by the North Sea. And I suppose those could be the players in Vikanze. In this case, I'm thinking about the software, actually. And what I did... I said something about what an exciting tournament was, and, and there was plenty of violence and um, very intriguing battles. And I said that um, I, I didn't I didn't watch that much of it live, and I only streamed once actually. But what I did do was I played through the games in the evenings, most evenings, or many evenings anyway. And um, with an engine running. And occasionally it produced really interesting bits and pieces. So I've got um, three of those uh, today. And I've also got a really beautifully hackety game from the B group, from the Challengers. So let's go to Chess Space. And we'll open column 187. Which I stuck down there so I could find it. And we'll start with Ding against Geary. Which is this game where Geary... I don't know if I want this on or not really, the slide over there. I'm not that interested in the opening. Um, you're able to play d4 basically because b, b3 doesn't fight for the centre enormously. And Ding played quite an interesting way. Very aggressively. Interestingly, very interestingly, the engine actually, this is the main thing, the position, I mean, you see that F takes E3 is a move in this position, obviously, if you're black, but you tend to believe that after this, this, you're going to have to take it because of the threats of H2, and take, it's going to be unclear, but actually, the engine says that rook E8, pawn takes pawn, Check here, here. Well, this position is obviously very unclear. And it turns out, I mean, you can't really. I think queen h2 is the right move. I'm going to put an engine on again for a second. If king h2, I assume you can go. Uh, what happens to king h2? Just rook e2, I'm assuming. Is even stronger. Okay, so Queen H2, Rook E2, Rook G1, and now it just happens G4. If I was trying to calculate this position in a game, I still really wouldn't know what the evaluation was. I'd see that White's pieces were pretty awful. <coughs> the bishops on trapeze on B2. The knight is awful on A3. But I still wouldn't quite know without thinking about it because it's just such a non-standard position. But actually, they get, I'll give you a couple of lines. This is one line. That's a very simple line. That's completely over. And Queen F4 is interesting. Queen G6. H3 takes, takes, takes. I mean, again, I mean, here, white has a material advantage, but his king is extremely bad. And it turns out that this is very good for black. And I can give some lines. So that stops queen f6. And basically, you're going to land as black. But even so, it's not far from obvious at this moment you're really going to land. You know, you'd have to play some more moves to be at all certain. You can see you might be, but you just don't know. So but what happened was he went there, and after this... I mean, no normal person would play that line as black, even if it is winning, because it was too complicated. And here... Round about here... Um... Earlier on, rook d5 was a good move, actually. Sorry, at this moment. 
Rook d5 is very good because basically you have a big problem. You just get tied up. Awful things happen to you, fairly obviously. This, for instance, is completely winning. And, um, okay, and they played this game. And at the end, there was this nice trick knight f3 check. I don't know if he did he see bishop c4? Surely he did. Didn't quite believe it. He thought he'd have some thing he could do. Knight f6 check is what you want to do, but the excellent knight f3 check gets the advantage. King f2 is a much better move, actually, but he went. Um, he went. h8 and by by preparing rook g8 check you basically win the game um not an easy game at all um and i haven't really tried too hard to analyze it the interesting thing is that uh f takes e3 allowing white to sacrifice the exchange so that's two pieces for a rook and because you've already just taken a piece and then carrying on it just happens that line is good for black which you know i mean i believe the engine because of course it can calculate so much better than me but i'm still a bit discombobulated by it i think it's quite surprising that it's true so that was one game um the next one was also geary and they had this This novelty h4, which is interesting. Clearly, he'd prepared this. He knew he was giving up an exchange. <clears throat> and you can see white has a completely firm center and the preconditions for a kingside attack and is attacking b7, sort of. And, okay. I don't know particularly why he went there rather than to e7. Um, can't be too bad. I suppose to oppose the bishop. Um, I'm just going to ask it. Well, why don't you just go to e7? Is there something terrible that happens if you do? No, nothing. Okay. You just play chess. Uh, okay, so you went bishop d6 and they had this strange sequence. So White's got excellent compensation with the exchange now, apart from the fact that he's going to have to scuttled to get his king castled. It's a nice move, isn't it? Preparing bishop c4, getting the pieces out nicely. Castles, very important. And they got to this position. That threatened, obviously, to play knight g5. You can't, um, bishop f7 doesn't work, and pawn takes pawn doesn't work either. You have to wonder about pawn takes pawn, but queen takes bishop, you're already threatening knight e2 check. So you can't do that. Now the position I wanted to look at was this position. So, um, okay, you, obviously as white you see that Knight takes f7 might be a move. It's very hard to tell. It doesn't look like it is, really. Obviously, you can't take with the f8 rook because of queen d8 mate, but you can take with the other rook. <coughs> but if rook f3, which is what you want to play, then there's queen b1 check. But the engine says, yes, you can take. Rook takes. And king h2, which is a beautiful move. Just saying, I'm going to threaten rook f3 next move. And it turns out that this is winning, apparently. Um, so, rook e8, rook a3 takes rook f3. Uh, so, the point of a3 was to pin the horse. That was one line. Um, queen c5, queen c3, queen e3, bishop f6, check, I've said. I said just that is going to be good enough and there's another line king h8 rook c1 
And the problem is if knight e4, rook c4, queen e1, rook takes knight, there's no perpetual check, which is very important. That's the end of the perpetual. And if you go somewhere else with the knight, then now we bring the queen in twice, go rook to there. And that is also the end of the game because there's no decent defence against rook d8 check, which of course is covered by the knight and the c3. So, so the conclusion um, is that actually knight takes f7 wins in that position. And um, it's a... Uh, you know, an engine can do that immediately. If I let me let me go control R and let me just turn the engine off and turn the engine on in that position and see how long it takes for it to see that knight f seven wins. That's a bit more like I blast it. Uh, let's say pull on the floor. So we're starting. Yep, it's got to knight f seven in about Know, two seconds, one second, two seconds. Next one is, is this ending. I, I wanted to look at this ending. So is this Kamar game against Kamar game against Abdu Satorov, who of course fell off a great deal in the second half of the tournament. He was doing really well and then it started to fall apart a bit, sadly, at some point. Um, and um okay, sorry, just putting stuff back. So I'm going to get to the critical position of the ending. They had this big battle. They got first to this ending, which was disgusting for Black. Uh, and then came Abdus Satora fought very hard and got to here, which was it got worse actually at one point. And finally, after a lot of fighting, they got to this position. And this is the position I wanted to look at. So this is difficult. The thing is... Um, if you go rook b5, then there's rook f3, so you can't do that. So there is rook g5 check. Actually, they got to this position. So you can't go to the f file because of king h5 followed by rook f5 check followed by king g5. If you go to h6, then rook b5 wins because after rook h a3, there's g5 check and king g4, and that's, that's an easy enough win. So the only way you can do this, have any chance, is to play king to h7. But then you go check. Now if king g7, king g5 wins, so you go there. And now g5, which is quite hard to see actually, sort of putting the rook in. Rook to the 8 is the best you can do. Check here, check here, here. Black has to, he can attack or not attack, it doesn't matter. Um... You're going to play king h5 anyway in a moment. King h5 will threaten king g6 and rook f5 check. So black will have to attack the bet board at some point. So now you have to take this pawn because of rook f5 check. But now you're getting rook e8 check. And strangely, this is a winning position. King d4, king to there, rook to there, check, king to there. Mustn't play rook takes f4, but you just play g6. Rook f4 would be a drawn pawn ending. Because you'd answer king h5 with king g7. Rook takes, rook takes, king takes, king e6, king g4, king h... King f7, king h5, king g7. But you just play g6 here. And the main line goes something like here. Rook e4. Rook f1, king f6. That stops the king getting back. Now, king to d7 to e8, you have time to play g5 to g6 to g7. And you just play this at the end. And black is, somewhat remarkably, completely splatted. Absolutely no chance. Despite having the further advanced past pawn. Because he can't get his king in the game, he just completely lost. White will play g6 and g7. Take the f pawn. So, that, so he didn't do that, and eventually they drew. So that was basically what I wanted to point out in that one, that in this position, using a table base, you get the truth about this, and then you can work through it with a table base and understand. Because I kept on 
just quickly playing the wrong move. But I wasn't trying too hard. I was just letting it happen. And this was in round one of the B tournament. You may well have seen this somewhere else. Maybe in chess space. Just a fun game. H4. Good solid attacking move. That's a great move. Opening fire. Can't take it because of recaptures. Presumably. And something awful happens. Is that true or do you go queen h5 first? How do we do this? Yeah, of course you do. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And you can't go g6 because of knight f6 check. Knight takes, knight, queen h5. So he took actually. Pawn takes. Bishop takes, queen f6 wouldn't have been good. b5 is the sort of move you play in this position. Bishop to there. Knight to there. Bishop to there. Knight b7. I don't know if you could have played knight e7 in this position. I'm guessing you just probably play knight f3 and uh, just try knight e7. Something awful happen or not? Oh, d6 is a good move, is that right? I haven't understood this. d6 takes. Oh, heavens, queen h5. Not queen h5, something clever. d4, I haven't understood yet. Bishop b over right. See, I mean, I'm not, not trying that hard to get this right. And now queen d3, that's horrid, isn't it? g6, I suppose, or e4, it says. And something where you play knight f7. So if g6, or you play knight f7, then just h5. Oh my god. This is all just too much, isn't it? There are just too many boys. Aimed at the relevant sector. Horrible position. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Um, interesting. I hadn't. I mean, I, I played through this fairly quickly at one point. Right. So, bishop c2 was played. Seven, queen h5, d6. I've been showing this to everybody I teach. Uh, castles f5. Dc3, b4, bishop d4. With a huge attack, and it's really annoying that the pieces are in such good squares. Um, okay, f5. Rookie 1 was stronger, it says. Well, it's such a difficult position. d takes c3 is a mistake. Uh, queen f6 or bishop d7. So what happened was bishop h6 takes is actually okay. This, this is a draw apparently. You can easily get perpetual check as white but you can't do better. Bishop b4 is necessary to cover e1. Um, so you would look at e1. Queen f6, bishop d2. C3. And this is the critical position where the engine says some interesting things. You went Queen H6, yes. So the question is what other moves are there apart from no, we'll go to Rupert Trading again. Sorry. Go away, I don't want that pre that move. So you played Queen H6, so there are a couple of questions. What's wrong with either Queen H6 or Queen F7? And is there a better move? Uh, you can have a look if you like, I and mean, it's not. You can see the queen takes bishop, knight g5 is catastrophic to tile. Actually, bishop b8 is an interesting move, which a guy called Gaiago, who I teach, is a complete hacker, so that's very good. Uh, I like teaching hackers, I have to say. Because um, I am one, really. I suggested, but unfortunately, bishop b8 fails to take, take, here, take. Check here. Check is the big move, actually. Here. Here, knight h7, or if king g8, check here. Bishop checks here, and it's slightly unobvious, at least I didn't immediately see it. Knight, knight f7 mate. Obviously, that knight f7 mate ought to be. Well, I suppose we'll remove this line, actually. Oh, we can leave it. Delete variation. No, oh, did I just promote it? Oh, God. Sorry. Promote variation. And... Ugh. 
let's see, delete, delete variation, sorry. Okay, so that was, that's one move, but the move that actually survives is rather glorious g6, weakening the diagonal. Because after bishop takes queen, pawn takes queen, it's just a game. Um, and of course, you can't just play queen h6 because the bishop is on prees. But he went queen h6, and this was not a good move. Rook e7. Same answer to queen f7, and that's the end of the game. Queen takes queen. Obviously, there's nothing you can do about this. Rook g7 is happening. Check here. Start some mill. Uh, now if king g8 we can just go and take the queen. We can also, if we want, take on c7 first before we take the queen. In fact, we could take on c7 and take on b7 and then go and take the queen. It's ridiculous. So he went rook f6. And this is hopeless now. Um, can't play knight d8 because of knight h7 check and rook e7 mate. Guy actually went bishop f2 check to give the knight a square. He just went bishop b2, and faced with many, many mates, uh, Black quite politely did this and allowed mate in one. But it's a very good hack to start the tournament off. Uh, the noise you can hear in the background, if you can hear it from my machine, is the women playing in the Women's Grand Prix, who seem to be hacking away merrily. There have already been a couple of very good hackety games. Lizzie Pates played a very good game against uh, her, the German compatriot. She Wagner, I think she is, uh, which ended with a nice blow. I'm just looking to see what this is. Okay, people, right. That's nothing to do with this column. So I hope you've enjoyed this column. And I will be back on presumably, let's have a look. Today, let me just turn this light off, on the 6th, on the 17th, the 19th, sorry. Today's the 4th, but tomorrow's the 5th when this is going to come out. And I'll be back on the 19th with some more games. So I, I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this.